Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about my favourite Nikon Z lenses for travel photography. If you've seen either of my last two videos, you might know that I've recently come back from a trip to Germany. And it was the first trip outside of the UK I've done since lockdown. And I think it's the first video I've done for my channel outside of the UK as well. And since I was travelling with a certain budget airline, I needed to pack quite lightly and I really had to consider what lenses and equipment I was going to take with me. So this video is going to be my choices of the best Nikon Z lenses to take while traveling. I'm going to go through which lenses I chose to take and why and show you some of the shots that I got on the trip that I haven't shown in, in the other two videos. So here's the short list of lenses I came up with. The 24-200mm f4-6.3 lens the 24-70mm f4 S-line lens, the 14-30mm f4 S-line wide-angle lens, and the 50mm 1.8 S-line prime lens. Now I decided against prime lenses in the end, even though this is really light, quite small, and 50mm is a good focal length really for travel photography, and primes in general can work quite well for travel, but I wanted the versatility of a zoom, so I decided against primes and it really came down to the choice between the 24 to 70 and the 24 to 200. And I'm not going to go into detail about why I chose the one that I did because I made another video on that and I'll link up top to that now. But basically I went for the 24 to 200 millimeter in the end. So along with that, I took the 14 to 30 millimeter wide angle and that meant that I had everything covered from 40 millimeter all the way to 200 millimeter. And they're quite light and they don't take up a lot of space in my bag either. And also, along with that, even though it's not a Nikon Z lens, I had my Google Pixel 4 phone with me as well, which is really useful when you haven't got your camera with you, just to whip out your phone and get some travel shots with that as well. So I'm going to go through some of the shots that I got now that I haven't shown in the other videos, and I'll put those up on screen and talk through them. So this shot was taken in the woodland area in Brule, near where we were staying. It does get quite misty in the evenings there, and it had been raining most of the day. And then with a little bit of warm weather in the evening, all of that wetness just kind of rose up off the grass and created all this really lovely mist. And we'd gone out for a walk in the woods there, and the mist was just getting thicker and thicker. I thought, I've got to get a shot of this. So there wasn't really much in the way of subject. There was just this little clump of trees that you can see on the right there. And I decided to make most of the focus on the fog hanging over the field. But the sky was quite moody and dramatic as well, so I angled the camera up a little bit to capture some of that sky. And I'm fairly pleased with the end result, even though it was pretty much a quick snapshot. It came out quite nice and moody, and I made it black and white and upped the contrast a bit just to emphasise that. This is another shot from Sesha Zolferein, and if you didn't see the video where I took these shots, I'll put a link up top now. But basically it's a former coal mine, coking plant and coal mine complex. And there's a museum there now. And where the museum is housed, it's a huge cavernous building. I'm not really sure what the building was used for prior to being a museum. But you've got all these walkways inside it now, which are lit up with these bright orange lights. So it's really interesting in there. You've got this big cavernous space that's really dark and dingy. And then all of these winding stairways here and there which is really great for architectural photography. Unfortunately I wasn't allowed to take my tripod in there which is a bit of a problem because it's really low light but I basically rested my camera at the top of the banister on the stairway to the right there and took a long exposure and I was using the 14 to 30 millimeter lens here. I really wanted to capture the the scale and the vastness of the space and I wasn't quite the widest focal length. I think it was around 17 millimeter, but hopefully it does capture some of that scale. And uh, I just like this intricate layout of all the walkways and how it forms this really graphical, almost confusing at first because you've got the reflection and things, but yeah, hopefully quite an interesting image. To the west of Germany, near the Belgian border, there are loads of little villages dotted here and there that are really quaint and great for photography. They've usually got a river winding through them and little cottages with flowers outside, just like this one. And this one's called Monschau. 
We went there for the day and it's a really beautiful little village. I've got a thing about doors, I really like doors, especially interesting looking ones. And this one was particularly interesting because it was slightly ajar. And you could just see inside the little staircase there and I thought that was just really interesting. There's a little bit of story there, a little bit of intrigue. Because you wonder why is the door open and what's behind it, where did the stairs go. And it's also a really nice little scene with the decoration around the door and the flowers and plants and things there. So yeah, I really like that shot. Here's another shot from Monshaw. It's such a beautiful little village, you can pretty much point your camera anywhere and get a good shot. It is the middle of the day, so the light is quite harsh. It would look great in the morning with sunrise light or maybe in the evening at sunset. But I'm hoping that the beauty of the village itself, as well as the composition, carries this shot. I like how the flowers are at the bottom of the shot, kind of anchoring the scene. And you've got the name of the village on the box there. And then your eye just kind of wanders up onto those buildings as they go back along the river. And then it's all framed by the really great foliage and greens of the trees in the background. I did take a shot of this with my mobile as well, which I quite liked. It was slightly warmer. But in the end, I went for this one. I did have to photo stack this as well, just to get the kind of same depth of field, being quite close to the box there at the front. I took one focused on the box with the flowers. And then I took another one focused on the little lamp to the left hand side on the building. I'm hoping that the shot just captures a little bit of the essence of the place. Another one from Monchow. Just walking along the road and just saw this car and I thought it looked so interesting. An old Mercedes which was really beat up but they'd scratched all these designs into the side of it and painted it. And it actually looked really cool. And I took quite a few shots of the car from different angles. I quite like this one the best and I thought it highlighted the versatility of the 24 to 200 millimeter lens because this was taken at 24 millimeters using that lens and it still looks quite wide angle when you get down low looking up at the car you've got that kind of wide angle effect and on another occasion I might have switched to the 14 to 30 for this but I didn't have it with me that day but I do think that the 24 to 200 did a good job in the end. So this was taken when we went for a day out in a place called Vindeck. There's a museum there all about the rural life of the town and some history of the place but this was actually taken outside of the museum in some really nice gardens there there's loads of butterflies and bees and things flying around and i only had my 24 to 200 millimeter with me that day but at the 200 millimeter end it actually doubles up as a fairly decent macro lens obviously it's not quite as good as an actual macro lens but there's some nice detail on the butterfly some good bokeh in the background. I quite like how the flower was positioned at the bottom of the shot there. It's quite a central composition but I quite like it. This one's also at the museum in Vindeck outside and there are some old stables and things there. As you can see the light's really harsh so I've made it black and white. I quite liked how the light was shining on these two old wagon wheels. Not a lot else to say about that one really. I just like the kind of rustic charm of that one I suppose. Some nice textures and nice contrast there. Hopefully it says a little bit about the place and the history of the area. This shot was taken at a forest park called Valdau. We'd gone for a walk there and I didn't have my Z7 with me that day. So I had to take this shot with my phone and I noticed this mushroom down by the foot of a tree and I thought that the yellow of the mushroom contrasted quite well with the green background. The depth of field in the image is not real. The blurry background is actually created by the software on the phone. But I did think it looked quite plausible and quite nice. And it really is true that the best camera is the one that you have with you. Because I wouldn't have got this shot if I hadn't had my phone with me that day. And it's quite nice. It's almost like a macro shot. You can zoom in on that a little bit and you get some really nice detail on the water droplets on the mushroom. So yeah, considering it's a phone shot, I was quite happy. And here's another shot I took with my phone. There was a spectacular sky one evening. And I didn't have my camera with me at the time, so I had to use my phone because I really wanted to capture it. And there wasn't really a subject to take a photo of other than this sunflower. So I got down really low looking up at the sunflower with the sky as a backdrop behind it. And I was really pleased with how it came out. The detail on the flower is really good and the colors are quite good as well. I edited this in Adobe Lightroom Mobile and I haven't really changed the colors too much. I just slightly emphasized the sky, but it really was that dramatic and that colorful. 
And again, it's really useful to have a phone with a camera in it. For those occasions where you haven't got your DSLR or mirrorless camera with you, you can just make the difference between getting the shot or not getting the shot. It might not be perfect, but it's better than not getting the shot. This one was taken at Berg Elts. I did a whole video about this castle, so if you haven't seen that one, I'll put a link up top. And I got up really early, about 4am, drove for a couple of hours to get here, and unfortunately didn't get any good sunrise light. However, there was a really moody sky and some mist as well, so I decided to make all the images quite moody and atmospheric to emphasise that mist and the sky, and I was quite pleased with how they came out. This shot I went black and white, and I've taken it quite straight on compared to some of the other shots I got. I also went backwards up the road a little bit, which got me a little bit higher, and I got less distortion in the castle that way because I'm higher up. But it doesn't really matter what angle you take a shot of, of this castle, it looks great from any angle. And I just love how it looks like this old fantasy. It's like something straight out of a movie, really. So yeah, it's a fantastic location. I really enjoyed getting these shots. So as you can see, most of the shots I took with the 24 to 200 millimeter lens. It really is fantastically versatile for all kinds of photography, but particularly for travel photography. You've got everything from the wide angle all the way up to 200 millimeters. I did have to take the 1430 with me as well, just for when 24 millimeters wasn't enough. I didn't use it quite as much as the 24 to 200, but there were some occasions when I was indoors and things like that, and it was quite useful. And also, the Google Pixel 4 smartphone. Don't underestimate your phone because you really can get some great shots with it, and there'll be times when you haven't got your camera with you and you'll have to rely on your phone. I'm going to wrap this one up now, but thanks a lot for watching everyone. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, and if you're not subscribed yet, then please consider doing so. As always, you can click down there on the big red button or on my face over here. And that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time. So that's it for this one. I hope you'll catch me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.